Good evening, sisters and brothers, and welcome to this evening's evening prayer. It is. Uh, it's been a. It's been a rainy day today, so I'm I'm outside chancing the rain. I'm between showers, <laughs> so hopefully it will hold for at least half an hour for us to get through the prayers outside this evening. It's the last day of July, the 31st, and so we are grateful to God for bringing us to the end of another day and indeed another month. Um, and by God's grace to see another to see another month and begin tomorrow. So let's pray as we come to the end of this day. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O oh God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and be not wise in your own sight. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and be not wise in your own sight. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. <clears throat> and our psalm this evening is Psalm number 28. Psalm 28. The Lord is my strength and my shield. To you I call, O Lord, my rock. Be not deaf to my cry, lest, if you do not hear me, I become like those who go down to the pit. Hear the voice of my prayer when I call, cry out to you, when I lift up my hands to your Holy of Holies. Do not snatch me away with the wicked, with the evildoers who speak peaceably with their neighbors while malice is in their hearts. Repay them according to their deeds and according to the wickedness of their devices. Reward them according to the work of your, their hands and pay them their just deserts. They take no heed of the Lord's doings, nor of the works of his hands. Therefore shall he break them down and not build them up. Blessed be the Lord, for he has heard the voice of my prayer. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart has trusted in him, and I am helped. Therefore my heart dances for joy. And in my song will I praise him. The Lord is the strength of his people, a safe refuge for his anointed. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Shepherd them and carry them forever. The Lord is my strength and my shield. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And our prayer. Hear us, shepherd of your people. Forgive us our sins, and in a world of pretenses, make us true in heart and mind, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. All right, our, our reading, first reading, 1 Samuel chapter 14, 1 Samuel 14 from verse 24 to 46. 
1 Samuel 14 from verse 24 to 46. Now the men of Israel were pressed to exhaustion that day because Saul had placed them under an oath saying, let a curse fall on anyone who eats before evening, before I have full revenge on my enemies. So no one ate anything all day, even though they had all found honeycomb on the ground in the forest. They didn't dare touch the honey because they all feared the oath they had taken. But Jonathan had not heard his father's command. And he dipped the end of his stick into a piece of honeycomb and ate the honey. After he had eaten it, he felt refreshed. But one of the men saw him and said, Your father made the army take a strict oath that anyone who eats food today will be cursed. That is why everyone is weary and faint. My father has made trouble for us all. Jonathan exclaimed. A command like that only hurts us. See how refreshed I am now that I have eaten this little bit of honey. If the men had been all allowed to eat freely from the food they found among our enemies, think how many more Philistines we could have killed. They chased and killed the Philistines all day from Michmash to Aijalon, growing more and more weary. That evening they rushed for the battle plunder and butchered the sheep, goats, cattle and calves, but they ate them without draining the blood. Someone reported to Saul, look, the men are sinning against the Lord by eating meat that still has blood in it. That is very wrong, Saul said. Find a large stone and roll it over here. Then go out among the troops and tell them, bring the cattle, sheep, and goats here to me. Kill them here and drain the blood before you eat them. Do not sin against the Lord by eating meat with the blood still in it. So that night all the troops brought their animals and slaughtered them there. Then Saul built an altar to the Lord. It was the first of the altars he built to the Lord. Then Saul said, Let's chase the Philistines all night and plunder them until sunrise. Let's destroy every last one of them. His men replied, We'll do whatever you think is best. But the priest said, Let's ask God first. <laughs> so Saul asked God, should we go after the Philistines? Will you help us defeat them? But God made no reply that day. Then Saul said to the leaders, Something's wrong. I want all my army commanders to come here. We must find out what sin was committed today. I vow by the name of the Lord who rescued Israel that the sinner will surely die even if it is my own son, Jonathan. Seriously. But no one would tell him what the trouble was. Then Saul said, Jonathan and I will stand over here, and all of you stand over there. And the people responded to Saul, whatever you think is best. Then Saul prayed, O Lord, God of Israel, Please show us who is guilty and who is innocent. Then they cast sacred lots, and Jonathan and Saul were chosen as the guilty ones, and the people were declared innocent. <laughs> then Saul said, Now cast lots again and choose between me and Jonathan. And Jonathan was shown to be the guilty one. Tell me what you have done, Saul demanded of Jonathan. I tasted a little honey, Jonathan admitted. It was only a little bit at the, on the end of my stick, 
Does that deserve death? Yes, Jonathan, Saul said. You must die. May God strike me and even kill me if you do not die for this. But the people broke in and said to Saul, Jonathan has won this great victory for Israel. Should he die? Far from it. As surely as the Lord lives, not one hair on his head will be touched. For God helped him do a great deed today. So the people rescued Jonathan and he was not put to death. Then Saul called back the army from chasing the Philistines. And the Philistines returned home. This is the word of the Lord. Now of course this, this whole incident Saul brought upon himself. First of all, he, he made a stupid oath that nobody's to eat, which is, he did not get that from God. That was his own thing. That is why when the lot was cast, it fell on both of them. They were both sinning. It wasn't that Jonathan sinned and Saul didn't. Saul sinned by making a, 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 a rash oath uh, um, uh, and Jonathan sinned by not realizing what he was doing, the sin of omission, not realizing that he was breaking the oath that his father um, made. The oath itself was sinful, uh, and so in a sense, breaking it wasn't, you know, but, but he shouldn't have broken, broken the oath because all the other men had to keep that oath. And Saul and, and Jonathan, not realizing about the oath, as I said, it's a sin of omission. A sin that you don't know about, but you do it anyway, and you're still guilty. <laughs> still guilty of the sin, despite the fact that you didn't realize that you were sinning. Um, and, and, and of course, Saul knew exactly what he was doing by making that oath. And so by doing it, he placed his son and all the soldiers and all of his men in, in jeopardy. Uh, and, and of course, so, so both of them. Were, were at fault and um and god and this is where god is not pleased with the way saul is ruling as king because he does all these rash things these things that without thinking without praying even i mean you know somebody had to say you know let's con the priest that is say we need to consult the lord before we do anything saul and so all right then let's go you know this 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 sense of I I am in charge I, I I can do what I want and I don't need to consult anyone or even God that's Saul's attitude and um, and that's going to be his downfall his arrogance and you know his his, his lack of his, his, frankly his lack of um, humility and trust in God and his own his trust in himself. And because he's, he's the first king of Israel. I think there's a lot of pride in Saul. He, he probably goes to his head uh, now. I mean, when he was younger, it was a bit different. But now as he gets older, is this pride is becoming his downfall. Um, and, and, and so now he, even his son is, uh, is put in jeopardy, his life, because of Saul's stupidity. stupidity. You know, many times we do things like this, sisters and brothers. We, we make stupid decisions, stupid promises, uh, and, and, and we have to live with the consequences of those promises or decisions that we make, those choices that we make, without consulting the Lord, without actually going to God and say, Lord, guide my decision. What is best in this situation? Because we, are pro because we allow pride and, and, and self-centeredness and, and self-assurance to control us, like Saul, it's our downfall. All right, let's move on. Um, our New Testament reading, um, Luke 23, from verse 13. Uh, Luke 23, verse 13 to 25. Luke 23 from verse 13 to 25. Then Pilate called together the leading priests and, uh, and other religious leaders 
along with the people. And he announced his, his verdict. You brought this man to me, accusing him of leading a revolt. I have examined him thoroughly on this point in your presence and find him innocent. Herod came to the same conclusion and sent him back to us. Nothing this man has done calls for the death penalty. So I will have him flogged and then I will release him. Then a mighty roar rose from the crowd and with one voice they shouted, Kill him, crucify him and release Barabbas to us. Barabbas was in prison for taking part in an insurrection in Jerusalem against the government and for murder. Pilate argued with them because he wanted to release Jesus. But they kept shouting, crucify him, crucify him. For the third time he demanded, why? What crime has he committed? I have found no reason to sentence him to death. So I will have him flogged and then I will release him. But the mob shouted louder and louder, demanding that Jesus be crucified and their voices prevailed. So Pilate sentenced Jesus to die as they demanded. As they had requested, he released Barabbas, the man in prison for insurrection and murder. But he turned Jesus over to them to do as they wished. This is uh, the word of the Lord. This is, of course, a travesty of justice. Here, Pilate knew that this man was innocent and he chose to condemn an innocent man. Why? Because of the baying crowd. The shouts of the crowd prevailed. Here is a man, instead of doing what is right, was doing what is popular, doing what is expedient, what was good for his own political career. Instead of doing the right thing, doing justice, he did injustice in order to curry favor with the religious authorities and the religious leaders. That is why, that is why Pilate doesn't get off, you see, um, for, for what he has done. He doesn't go free for what he has done. He is just as guilty as everybody else in this story. Um, because he had the power to release Jesus. And instead of releasing him, he listened to the, the, the screaming crowd, the loudness of the crowd, and, 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 the, and the religious leaders, and had an innocent man killed. You know, and again, when I say the, the baying crowd, the noise of the crowd, it's not, it's not, it probably wasn't even the majority of the crowd. But it was the ones who screamed the loudest, the ones who had the loudest megaphone. You know, sisters and brothers, that is how it's always been throughout history. Those who shout the loudest are the ones who get heard. The majority, the silent majority, uh, are the ones who suffer in silence. And, or or, or they, they, their, their interest is hardly ever heard, uh, even today. The people who are heard, the people who are, who are, who are given an, 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 an audience in the halls of power in our world and even in our country, are those who, 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 who shout the loudest, who are, who are on television and radio and all, all the time making a noise. And they are the ones that the politicians listen to and even if it means injustice for the for the majority for the silent majority the, the 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 noisy minority will prevail and always prevail within the halls of power with politicians and those who 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 make who make laws and so on in our country and in our world and that is a sad history of our world and this is of course this this happened with our Lord. Uh, it's it, it's uh, it's 
Pilate knew he was innocent, Pilate released a guilty man, Barabbas, a man who was put in prison for insurrection and murder, and very likely will do the same again if, he, if his heart wasn't changed. And we have no indication in history that Barabbas ever changed. But Jesus, who, who never hurt anyone, is instead sentenced to death by, the, by Pilate. And he handed him over to them as so for them to do as they wish, for them to do what they want with him. He doesn't even stipulate. He's like he's, he's he literally washed his hands of the situation, thinking that by washing his hands of it, he can absolve himself from the from the the the, the, the guilt that comes with hand. With, with crucifying uh, 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 an, an innocent man. I mean, you can say, well, I didn't crucify him, they did. Well, <laughs> they couldn't crucify him without your permission, Pilate. And so you were just as guilty as everybody else. And that, sisters and brothers, is the, the world in which we live. That happens every day in our world. Travesty of justice. But Jesus was the, was the, 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 the worst of all and probably the one uh, well not probably he was the most innocent of person who was killed and a, a, a guilty person went go free now there's a great symbolism in that of course the guilty man barabbas was set free while the innocent man jesus was killed and of course the symbolism in that is sisters and brothers is that barabbas represents you and i Barabbas represents all sinners. You and I who, 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 who are guilty before God, Jesus, the innocent one, has taken our place. Just as he took Barabbas' place, he, that, that one act was symbolic of all the guilty people in the world, that is everybody else, for whom Jesus died. And that's you and me. We are the Barabbases who, are, who got off freely despite the fact that we are guilty and we deserve to be on that cross. But instead, Jesus took our place as he did Barabbas' place. That cross was meant for Barabbas. Instead, Jesus hung on that cross. That cross was meant for you and I. And Jesus took it for us. That is the gospel. That's the good news, sisters and brothers. That what we deserved, he took upon himself and set us free. And that, that should have changed Barabbas. But we don't have any indication that it ever did. Let's pray. Pops on my head. Let's pray. Kindle in our hearts, O God, the flame of love which never ceases, that it may burn in us, giving light to others. May we shine forever in your temple, set on fire with your eternal light, even your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. Amen. Gracious God and Father, we bring to you the needs of this world, the life of your church, and the concerns of our hearts. Almighty Father, you promised through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. So we pray for the world. You love the world so much that you gave your only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins the innocent dying for the guilty. Have mercy upon this sinful world, O God. Mend the brokenness in this world. Let your kingdom of love, peace, and righteousness come on this earth even as it is in heaven. We pray for the poor, the destitute, refugees fleeing conflict and poverty in their homeland. Remember in your mercy those who risk their lives to cross open seas 
to find greener pastures in foreign lands. Protect them from those who would exploit their plight and use their desperation to make money while putting their lives in danger. Protect them from the dangers on the seas, from dangers on land, and from those who are inhospitable to the stranger and the foreigner. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for peace in our world. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the Prince of Peace. In you we find perfect peace and rest. Bring peace into the hearts of men and women everywhere. Where there is conflict, bring peace. Conflict in families, in communities, and in our world. We pray for peace in such places that are, that are in the news. In, in Ukraine, in Syria, in Sudan, Palestine between the Jews and the Arabs in Niger we pray for peace a peaceful resolution between the, the, those who support the president and those who have taken who have seized power through a coup Lord in your mercy hear our prayer you promise Lord God that one day all wars shall cease one day <clears throat> nations will no longer train for war one day all weapons of war will be turned into useful tools that will benefit humanity instead of kill and destroy <clears throat> lord jesus hear us we pray for all those whose lives are disrupted by war and violence uh, we pray that you will disrupt their plans we pray disrupt the war machinery of those who plan war bring confusion in their camp so that their plans to destroy the lives of others will come to nothing <coughs> and so lord heal the brokenness of our world where there is war and violence bring peace and harmony where there is hatred bring your love where there is sadness, bring joy. Where there is despair, bring hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the great healer. And so we pray for the sick and those who are suffering in, in spirit, soul, and body, in mind. You are the compassionate and loving Lord. You care for your people in their suffering. Lord Jesus Christ, when you walk this earth, you showed compassion to those who called out to you for help. Have compassion on those in our prayers tonight. We believe that your power to heal and save is just as strong and powerful today as always. So we bring to you those who are on our minds and in our hearts. You know their names, you know their needs. May they receive comfort and hope and recovery of health. Give them patient faith in your power to, to heal and to restore broken bodies and minds. Strengthen their faith and hope in you that whatever happens to them, they will know of your peace and your comfort in their lives. Comfort and heal those who suffer in body and spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and give them the joy of your eternal salvation lord in your mercy hear our prayer and so remember oh lord in your mercy our sisters doreen uh, these are family members jean and walter monica dion sue veronica and chester dolly and desmond jean and joanna and pat and ray pauline and daphne muriel and David and Suryakala, Veronica, Monica and Cheryl, Una, Charity, Pippa, Duke, Radcliffe and Pauline, Sarah, Archdeacon Elwin, Mr. Gray, and Andy. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. We pray also for the church. And we, we pray, God of mission, who alone brings growth to your church. Send your Holy Spirit to give vision to our planning, wisdom to our actions, and power to our witness. Help your church to grow in numbers, in spiritual commitment to you, and in service to our local community. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so, Lord, empower your church by your Holy Spirit that we may show forth in our lives the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, that we may shine with your light in the darkness of this world. Strengthen your church with your grace that we may be your hands and feet and voice in this world, that we may be effective witnesses for you that we may be faithful to the calling that you have entrusted to us. That we may proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ without compromise. We pray, O oh God, for all whom you have called and empowered to be leaders or pastors in your church. We pray for all bishops, all deacons, all priests, and all ministers of your word and sacrament that they may be faithful in their proclamation of your word and be an example in their lives to the love of Christ to, their, to others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now, Lord, let your servant depart in peace for our, according to your word. For mine eyes have seen your salvation which you have prepared before the face of all people, a light to enlighten the Gentiles and to the glory of your people Israel. O gracious light, pure brightness of the everlasting Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices. O Son of God, O giver of life, therefore all the world glorifies you. Amen. And so, all Holy Trinity, powerful in essence, kingdom undivided, source of all good, be gracious to us, even though we are sinners, undeserving sinners. Make our hearts firm and wise and cleanse us from all impurities. Enlighten our minds that we may forever sing, glorify and worship you, saying, Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. And so our final night prayer. Lighten our darkness, Lord, we pray. And in your great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. As we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
son is back out. Wow, it's amazing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly upon you and give you rest and peace tonight, sisters and brothers. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good night, sisters and brothers. <laughs>